Well, welcome back to True Rhymes. Just a little diversion tonight. We're not actually going to do a rhyme. We're going to do a song. We're going to actually have a bit of a discussion about Yankee Doodle Dandy because I think it's a rather appropriate way to get a message across as to how words can change through time. Of course, if you're an American, I'm sure you know Yankee Doodle Dandy, the song. But if you're not an American, by any chance, and you're watching our show, I'm going to sing it for you. So don't hold me too responsible because I suck at singing. But here we go. It's a quite a simple little ditty. It goes something along the lines of Yankee Doodle went to town riding on his pony, stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Now, doesn't that sound typically insane? I mean, what the hell is a macaroni doing in a bloomin' song in a converse case? Makes no sense except when you actually know what a macaroni was referring to. If you were to have a look into history, and I reckon we've got a shot somewhere in the bloomin' technology world there of a macaroni, it was actually an aristocrat from about the mid-1700s, well, actually probably the early 1700s, when the aristocracy went across Europe and they travelled around and they saw all the really cool things that were going on. When they got back to London, they turned up with silk pants and shiny buttons and crazy fucking ass hairdos and they thought they were amazing. And so when America got born, I don't know, does a country get born? Now that's an interesting question. When it got settled... I don't know. I'm not really sure. But anyway, all the people went to America. And the interesting thing about the new world was that you could make yourself from nothing. So there was men there that turned up with very little and they started trading beaver skins and bloody buffalo hides and God knows what else they were doing, but probably selling tobacco. I don't know what they were up to. But they made some money. And of course, the aristocracy from Europe went, this is just not on. And they rolled into town. And there were the Americans that had come up from nothing and they were starting to look quite smart because there was obviously in any society there's levels and there was young businessmen there that were starting to dress up and look quite respectable. But of course the macaronis who were like the next level up and they thought they were something insanely special, they were trying to make fun of the new colonials and they were saying that they thought them better than they were because, you know, they weren't really noble. They were only just bloody commoners. They didn't have a real horse. They were even on a pony, for God's sake. And just because they had a feather in the hat, they thought they were all fashionable. ball. But you know what history said? History said we can make this shit our own. So what happened when the Americans decided... Well, actually, I don't think they were Americans at that particular moment in history. When the settlers... I don't know, what were they called? Were they called settlers? Anyway, when the colonies or the settlers in America decided, you know what, stick it up your ass, King Henry. Not King Henry, King George, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was King George. Yeah, stick it up your ass, King George. We're going to become our own thing. And what did they do? The ragtag bunch of individuals started rebelling against the king. And can you imagine? I don't know. You want to look at some history. The Redcoats were a formidable army. They were pretty psycho. And they had it pretty well worked out. And they, so they actually started singing the song to bloody the Yankee Doodle song to sort of insult the American soldiers. But of course, as the war draw on, you got a bit more organised and the Americans got, I don't know, I guess trained. So they had the proper army, a bit more trained up. Maybe there was a few defectors from the Redcoats. I'm not really sure how that all went, but I'm pretty sure there was... I think the French turned up in all this excitement too, which was rather interesting because the French and the English, they weren't real friendly at the time. They were having a bit of a box on, you know, as, as you do in Europe. Anyway, so as the Americans got a little bit organised and they had this bloody freaking rebellion, well, it's called a rebellion, but I'm guessing it's independence, I'm not sure. I would say if you were an American, you would say you were fighting for independence. If you are an English bloody kingdom, you'd be saying that they were rebelling. So anyway, it just depends what side of history you're on. The upside to it is there was this general called Cornwallis and he'd had a lot of victories and he'd bloomin' decimated the poor American armies. But, you know, history would tell you that they actually were not going to be defeated that easily. So they got organised and they actually rallied around and they got Cornwallis trapped in this bloody castle 
and they bombed the shit out of him and the French turned up and blew the shit out of him from the sea. And what's more, so he's like thinking, my God, what was happening? This ragtaggy little bunch of colonials have wiped him out. And the cool thing about Yankee Doodle Dandy, which is what I like, is the Americans added the next little, I think they added this chapter on the end, which is I really like, because it goes, Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Hang on, I can't see because my eyes aren't very handy. Wait a minute, it doesn't say that. Wait a minute, I'm going to read it for you properly. <laughs> Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Mind your music and the step. And with the ladies are pretty handy. I'm not sure, but anyway, I thought that was pretty good. And apparently, when they conquered the English army, they played the Yankee Doodle song to them as the poor bloody English soldiers were laying down their guns. You've got to give it to the blooming colonials when they sort of turn that insult into a victory song. I mean, I just love the way language can be turned around to, if you're the winner, you get to tell the tale. And that's what this rhyme show is about. We're actually gonna tell some of the tales from the people that didn't win. So don't forget to click, like, subscribe, share with your friends, tell everybody about this insane green wearing Thai lunatic. And I reckon we've actually got a Patreon supporty up thing almost sorted out. Well, hopefully we have. If you go down to the link page underneath here somewhere and you see a Patreon support, feel so led as to throw a couple of bucks in there and hell, you never know where this show will end up.